So we're going to talk more about mid-latitude cyclones, and there are actually, I believe your textbook talks about two theories, and I don't know, this is the polar front theory, another one would be the conveyor belt theory, but I kind of want to highlight some features of, the, of a mid-latitude cyclone as we go. Now, polar front theory counts on the fact that, let me see, let me just put this whole thing up here. In the polar front theory, what it starts out is a stationary front um, between the top part of the feral cell and the bottom part of the polar cell. Remember where those two cells meet, about 60 degrees latitude, although that will wiggle around. Where they meet, we call the polar front. Okay, and so let's see, according to this theory, what happens as they mature. So mid-latitude cyclone. Um, now these, actually these next few slides are slides I brought forward from earlier. So here are the three slides I believe you need to insert. So we're going to talk more about, kind of get into more of the details about this, the, this polar front theory of these mid-latitude cyclones. But just looking at a surface map, this is kind of characteristic of the beginning of a mid-latitude cyclone. Um, again, you have your um, low front, so you have your cyclone, not low front, sorry, you have your central low here. So you have your cyclone in place. And we know that in the northern hemisphere, cyclonic movement or air movement around a cyclone of central low is counterclockwise. And you have a sector of, warm, of cold air being brought down, making a cold front, uh, warm air being brought up, creating a warm front. So this is uh, characteristic of a maturing mid-latitude cyclone. And I think I mentioned before that we need that third front, we need an occluded front for the weather system to be what we say mature, a, mid, a mature mid-latitude cyclone. But this is kind of showing you um, edge on, it's kind of a nice little look at edge on. If you were, and we've got other kind of figures like this coming up, this is showing you between segment A and segment B. Do you see that? Segment A and segment B would be right here, segment A and segment B. I think this is kind of neat how they did this. Okay, so we see the cold air coming through, lifting up the warm air. And can you almost kind of see where we're, we're, we're building up towards creating an occluded front, basically, dropping down from that central low? So here we have the beginnings of our occluded front. And again, uh, what your author's done is to go ahead and now if we look between segment A and segment B, it's right there where our occluded front kind of begins. Again, it's being kind of brought around by the say, same cyclone or central low that those other, uh, that the cold front was being brought down, the warm front's being brought up. So here we have um, kind of characteristic our cold occluded front. So, oh, I think this was the third. This must have been the third. Notice what happens characteristically is that if you compare the previous map with this map, our, um, the occluded front portion of our weather system has just what we say elongated. And um, we kind of have the tail end of our cold front and warm front down here. This actually is kind of near the end of the life cycle of this particular mid-latitude cyclone weather system. Okay, so back to kind of talking about the formation of a mid-latitude cyclone according to the polar front theory. So the, at the polar front where the ferrule, remember that's the previous chapter, two chapters ago I think it was. I can't remember if there's two L's or one L. It doesn't look right. Where the ferrule cell meets the polar cell, Oops, there we go, polar cell. Now it's about 60 degrees, I don't know, it wanders, 60 degrees latitude, and in the northern hemisphere, 60 degrees north latitude. Uh, we have what we call the polar front, so that would be marking the polar front. And oftentimes what we can get there is, I hope you recognize this, is a stationary front as it's drawn here, you know, alternating 
uh, semicircles, triangles, semicircles, triangles on either side of the front line. Okay. Um, let me go back one more time. I don't mean to make you dizzy. <laughs> but there actually are going to be A through F. And I have a slide that kind of summarizes these steps, but there are A, B, C, D, E, F. There are six different stages that I'm going to show you little, um, uh, little figures of for the development of a mid-latitude cyclone. So it starts with the stationary front. And then the next stage is we get some sort of kind of kink or what we call a wave in our stationary front. We'll talk in the next slide, how do you get these waves? Okay. And as the wave kind of intensifies, notice the difference between B and C is that C we have now clearly, and I kind of mentioned how a stationary front like that can turn into kind of cutting loose a uh, cold front and a warm front, and that's what's happened for C. So a wave will develop, and then we'll start to get kind of that, those, the wave will kind of break out into two segments, two sectors of air. Um, well, I don't know if that's what I want to say, but basically two fronts, I guess I should say, a cold front and a warm front. So that's the third um, stage. Now, how do we get those, how do we get these waves or these kinks? Oh, we can have mountains kind of create them. We can have temperature contrasts, like um, the system is moving uh, between sand, land or sea. And actually, ocean currents can kind of create that kink in a stationary front. To it, it creates a wave that ultimately can become, um, uh, kind of drop out these cold and warm fronts. Okay. Um, notice that actually at this stage, you see on a weather map here, a surface map, you see the cold front here, okay, where we have cold air being drawn down, and a warm front here. And like this says, um, well, we talked about how cold, uh, cold fronts can ha have a, abrupt transition zones, and cold fronts are notorious for bringing us uh, cumulonimbus clouds and uh, thunderstorms. And we said associated with a warm front, we get that this would be like the overrunning being shown here. Notice that we have our cyclonic movement. So cyclonic movement in the northern hemisphere is counterclockwise. It's cyclonic around that central low pressure. So the next stage actually is going to be an occlusion begins. And so notice here now we have an occluded front, cute little occluded front, extending down from our central low. Um, then what will happen is that occluded after that occluded front will become elongated. So the difference between D and E here is occlusion begins and occluded front develops, I guess. So um, notice actually at this point, this is the most mature and, well, most mature, I guess I shouldn't say that. This is the most intense. Um, the system is most intense at this point. Um, Mid-latitude cyclones historically have been known to really wreak havoc. Now, like other weather systems, they vary in intensities. But what can happen is your, um, you can have a very steep pressure gradient associated with your central low pressure. And if you have very tight isobars on your weather map showing you that you have a very steep pressure gradient, um, you can have very strong winds. Um, if you're from around here, the University of Northern Iowa, for instance, um, got, and I might have a slide later on that, that has the weather system that, hap that, that associated with this, but the Unidome at UNI, it got flattened by this sort of weather system. So the last stage actually is what we call dissipation, and um, the, basically, um, it kind of, it peters out. When, when the occluded front begins, it starts to kind of, even though it's the most intense stage, it starts to kind of lose its source of energy. So this was that new slide I was talking about. What I did basically was to look in your textbook and pull out the captions for as a mid-latitude cyclone matures. These are the captions. The front develops, stationary front. We have a way within that stationary front be 
see we have um, cyclonic circulation develops, and actually this is where we have, it breaks out into a cold and warm front. And then at D, we see the beginning of the occlusion of an occluded front. Um, e, the occluded front becomes fully developed. I, I think I like elongation. Basically, that there's elongation of that occluded front from the central low. And F, the cyclone dissipates. And oftentimes, after it dissipates, and we'll see it here on some historic weather maps, is that it returns to oftentimes just a stationary front. Isn't that neat? It kind of comes full circle. It's not like it comes full circle and can do it again, but 